iPhone 6 Plus Touch IC repair. I get a million of these things. Maybe not a million, but I get a lot of them. Anyways, um, so Penny covers this capacitor right here and this filter. I don't know which causes the gray dot Wi-Fi, but ever since I've been doing that, I just don't get the gray Wi-Fi anymore. All right, and I always direct the heat towards Stockholm. So I kind of just blow this way, just make sure I stay away from, uh, from this side. All right, echo. Trigger soldering on. Echo. Trigger soldering on. All right, so two pennies, uh, six millimeter nozzle. I'm at 400 degrees Celsius now at an airflow of 10. So direct to heat about an inch away. Uh, let's see. Let's see how long it takes. All right. Uh, so we're at. Okay. Let's see how long it takes to remove the chip. So it's like about 40 seconds right there, all right? 40 seconds for me to remove the chip. So I think that's probably your goal. I mean, some people do a little bit faster or whatever, but I don't really have a whole lot of secondary defects anymore, like, you know, overheating the other side of the board or anything like that. So that's my sweet spot. But do what you do what works best for you. So I always put a little bit of flux after it's done and get a little bit of 6337 Kester solder. Uh, just remove all the oxidation and the lead free solder. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to remove this. This uh, oxidation. Yeah, there it goes. All right, so that's done, and then we get to the other side and just finish this top row right here. Remove all the. See that's oxidized, M1. I think I probably need a little bit. Alright. Clean it off with a uh, Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol while it's still hot. That way it kind of dries up pretty quickly. We got a too much flux down here. And then I scrape away M1. I scrape away all the way to the via. This is the via right here, this little dot. And then there's a trace that goes to the via from the pad, right? And yes, this pad is not missing. It's a perfectly good pad. And there's continuity to it. No problems. Alright. So I just scraped that sucker away and you know at some point I was jumping L1 as well. L1 is the pad below it which also causes touch IC disease. This is L1 right here. 
if that pad is oxidized, that also causes that that causes there's no flickering with that. So after I remove it, I'm going to tin the pad. So I put a little flux on it. That turns out to be a lot of flux, and um, I will get my pencil. I the secret I the secret is to use lead free solder. Hmm. That's I don't know if that's secret or not, but I mean that's what I do. Just use lead free solder. Tin the pad here. And just make sure you don't get it everywhere. I think this probably tip is a little bit too big. Anyways, just tin that pad right there, which is tinned. And I use Gootwick. I'm running out of Gootwick. All right, so I use Gootwick just because it's really, really thin. Gootwick Solderwick as my jumper wire. I haven't had a problem yet. And like I said, I've done about 150 of these things since uh, mid-October, November time frame with uh, zero returns. So I like using my uh, my hot tweezers, the nano tweezers. They actually seem to work a little better than than the pencil. So again, lead free solder, all right. That's a little too much. Dang it. After doing so many of these damn things, I still not no foolproof method of doing this but this is the hardest part you know I think if I tin the jumper wire I think that may help a little bit if I just tin the wire I think that will help before I start All right, so that's pretty solid right there. Um, let me just—I just need to remove this excess right here, so I can remove it without adding to it. There. Nope, it's a big hump there. I'll have to do it later. Let's see. All right. All right. So that is pretty much good. I'm going to clean this up right here, see what my work looks like, and get ready for a new mason. I really don't think um, reballed new chip doesn't really, the only difference is that it'll save you time because sometimes reballed chips, you know, they're not, they don't, work out well. Sometimes they don't. I mean, it's just a time factor. If I'm busy, if I, I don't know, I, I normally, if I have new chips, then I'll, I'll use them up until I get kind of low, then I'll start reballing a little bit. But, uh, reball or new, it doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure I get Okay, so that's good right there. You guys can see that jumper, yeah? So I can focus that a little bit. There you go, that's my jumper right there. Not the prettiest. 
have a bug all I got. Alright, so clean that up just a little bit more. Alright, that's it. So let's put a new chip on. I guess the next question is, how much longer do we have with this iPhone 6 Plus repair? I mean, and our price is just going to continue going down in terms of the repair, you know. That's kind of my concern. So I'm not going to lie, uh, a lot of my revenue right now is based off this sole repair right here. But, you know, you can probably buy a 6 Plus right now for probably under 300 bucks, you know. And it's going to get to a point where, you know, people are probably going to probably not pay to fix it anymore, you know. And they're just going to, I don't think we're there yet because, you know, you're still looking at prices about, about you know, close to 300 or a little under 300 But uh, at the same time, Um, I can't remember what I was going to say, but anyways, how much longer do we have with this repair, right? So, I don't know, I'm always thinking about stuff like that. And the other thing I, other thing I think about all the time is no business, I've run a lot of businesses in my life, and no businesses, no business really lasts forever. Because where there's profit, there's going to be competition. And then when there's competition, there's going to be less margins. There's going to be less margins and um, and then um, And and then you know I guess it's like it's like screen repair, right? You know, screen repair is uh, a dying a dying thing, I think, because well, I wouldn't say it's dying, but I mean now that Apple's kind of stepped in a little bit, reduced their costs and stuff like that. I mean it's still there, but and then but the problem is this, like you know you have a screen repair shop across the street from you now or whatever you know and everybody's competing on price you know so seen this happen one too many times so anyways when I start a new business now I'm always on the lookout for uh, exit strategy as soon as I start it up cause nothing lasts forever ever no business lasts forever just just think about that alright the secret is knowing when to get out that's the hard part All right. All right. So there's your uh, 15 minute Mason M1 jumper touch IC repair. I'm gonna assume this works, so I'm not gonna show you guys. All right.